all my tools lined up here. So the first thing I'm going to do is uh, put a round bend in my piece of wire. Make sure it's nice and even. Make sure it's straight. And we're going to take our pre-dressed treble hook. See how shiny that is in the lure finish. Put that on the wire shaft. Close this up a little bit. We're going to clamp down on the bottom loop. And we're going to get our second pair of pliers. You want a very uh, short pair of pliers. You can put a lot of pressure on. This is actually an Eddie Bauer multi tool got from one of my past hunting partners and uh, we're gonna grab the tag end of the wire here make three nice smooth even wraps around the loop this is kind of awkward because the camera is actually in the way okay see how that how smooth that looks three wraps and then we're gonna cut the tag end off Hook doesn't bind, swings nice and freely. And we're going to take our lure body. This is a number 62 lure body. And this is gold. These will tarnish over time. And uh, you really can't break them up. So after a few seasons, they become very dull. And we're going to put our solid bead on top of that. And our clevis will actually spin on top of this. That is a uh, eighth of an inch solid silver bead. That goes on top of the lure body. And then we have a little tiny clevis here. This will test your patience for your dexterity. This is kind of tricky getting on. I dropped quite a few of these on the floor. My big giant fingers can get a hold of that. You have to put this through the hole in your spinner bleed. And uh, see how it's around that hole. And then we're just going to slide that on the spinner shaft. See how easily that spins. Oh, shiny. Yes, if I was a trout, I would like that. Okay, now we're going to put the loop on the top. Put your finger sideways. You can use them as a gauge. If you make the loop too close to this, if you make the loop too close to the spinner down here, the clevis won't spin, and then you have to cut it apart and start over. So I usually use my fingers. This is trial and error. These are the round bend pliers. So I'm about a half inch up that wire shaft. I'm gonna make a nice loop up here. Four up I have the loop. And remember if it's down here that you can't wrap the wire around it, your spinner your spinner blade can't rotate. And we're gonna take our small pliers, grab the loop right at the base, flip this over, take the heavy pliers, I'm gonna put three loops on top of that. Just one, two, three. Okay, that's just a hair bit too long. And we'll cut our tag end off. Put that on my paper. And we'll bend that a little bit. Spin it, see if it spins freely. And it does. That one's just a little bit too long. Okay, much better camera angle. Get my morning vitamins here. Delicious. Okay, now we're uh, takes about two minutes to make a spinner. It doesn't actually take very long. So now the camera's right in front of me. So you'll be looking down instead of in front of me. It's very hard to uh, 
make spinners look into the viewfinder on the back of a GoPro. It's very tiny. Kind of gave me, kind of gave me a headache. Now I got double vision. <laughs> it's not from the Colombian coffee either. <laughs> okay, let's turn it down here. It gave you a different, different camera angle. First time I started making spinners, I was working third shift and uh, still living at home. Really wasn't sure what I was doing and uh, stuck one of these hooks right in my thumb. So off to the hospital I went. Must have had a new intern there and uh, she really wasn't sure what she was doing. She grabbed a big pair of pliers like this and tried to rip that out of my thumb. And uh, I told her, I said, you're out of your mind. I said, you know how bad that hurts? I got blood running down my arm. And I told her, I said, you gotta numb that up. So they put a, they put a block in here, which is a big needle. They stick it in your skin, turn it all around. And then what it does is it, it blocks the pain to your finger. And uh, started working on my finger and the block didn't take then take uh, started working on my finger and that uh, nerve block didn't take effect yet I could still feel that she was in there rooting around trying to pull that out and I said you know you got to stop my fingers not numb yet so after my finger was numb what they did is they uh, pushed the treble hook all the way out the other side cut the tip off and then pulled it back out and I had a $700 hospital bill from one little treble hook stuck in my finger. I could not pull that out. It was stuck on the board. So I changed, I changed how I make the bottom of this. So I wrap this a different way so I can't stab myself in the finger. That was a $700 uh, learning experience for me. So once in a while, you know, you, you will stick your fingers with these treble hooks. They are sharp, so just be careful. Take your time, and uh, you can pull that out as long as you don't go past the barb very easily. And uh, if you go in past the barb on that treble hook, it's going to hurt. You can still pull it out, but it just requires a lot more pressure. I've uh, actually pulled treble hooks out of my face while I was fly fishing. You never want to fly fish on a windy day because it has a habit of blowing that fly back into your face. I pulled uh, flies out of my forearms. I actually pushed them through, cut the barb off the other side and pulled the hook out. So there's your words of wisdom today from a fly fisherman. Never fly fish in a high wind. Sometimes that loop just doesn't want to come out straight no matter what you do. It'll uh, twist around, it won't lay flat. Just keep bending it till you get a nice even loop like that. Turn this around. Okay, I'm going to put our three twists on the top below the loop. One, two, Great. Here it is. The wire on this spinner is a uh, stainless steel, and it is 0.024. It's very flexible, and uh, if you get a big fish, it will bend this in half. But I've never had a fish snap one of these off, so you don't need to put extra, any extra loops in your spinner. Um, your line will break before you break this, so you never have to worry about this breaking. Okay, two spinners down, and uh, now we're going to go to time warp, and uh, I'll finish the rest of these spinners off, and then we'll move on to our next color.
12 more spinners ready to catch some trout and I did not stick any of them in my finger huh. had to take a break there's a uh, looking at these little pieces are hard on the eyes I uh, stared at a computer screen all day and uh, I spent a lot of time scanning stuff into the computer so usually by the end of the week my eyes get tired and uh, staring at these spinners is kind of hard on the eyeballs Usually when you buy a Panther Martin at the store, they're about four or five dollars. And uh, rooster tails are a little bit cheaper, but uh, I don't think you're getting what you pay for with the rooster tails. They uh, saved a lot of money on the quality of the hook. And uh, same thing with Panther Martins. If you have a lot of fish that you're losing because the hook or hooks aren't staying in, uh, you can try sharpening the hook, but uh, they just don't hold in edge like the Eagle Claws do. And uh, each one of these spinners cost me about $1.50 to make. Very reasonable and they're very durable. I can catch a dozen or more fish on each spinner until the thread on the end starts to get chewed off. Let's see if I can find one here. This one here, you can, uh, this one here, you can see how chewed up that is. And sometimes the fish will actually bend these in half. If you look at my fishing videos, you can see some of the ones that are actually bent in half. You can bend them back and uh, keep on using them or you can put another one on. Sometimes the tips of the hooks break off. So if you get stuck in the rocks, check and make sure the point is still on the end of the hook. That'll cost you some fish. Usually what I do with these is uh, I have a, a box, I throw all these in and then at the end of the season I cut them apart, keep the components that are still still usable in another spinner. Um, sometimes they get tarnished and they're not as shiny as they used to be so you won't catch the fish like they should. Okay, what I'm going to do now is I'm going to work on an orange rooster tail. I am basically going to cut this, the shaft in half and pull everything apart. I'm going to get rid of this the cheap hook on the bottom and I'm going to put the eagle claw on the bottom. It'll still be orange but it won't have the dressing. And we're going to see what that can do. So I have five of these. And uh, this will be my next victim. I'm going to work on these and see what we can do with these. Okay, we'll be right back. Take our cutters here. And uh, cut the shaft apart. Cut it right where the, right where the clevis is. And uh, the wire on this is very thin. Uh, it's much thinner than the wire that I use on my spinners. Take our components apart. Some of these I'm going to replace. I'm going to put a larger bead on here so it spins a little better. Pull all these little pieces of wire. So basically, I want to have basically I want to have the orange body and the spinner. My orange treble hooks. This part here, I'm going to discard. I don't need any of this. I'm going to throw that out. You can actually see that this is becoming an oval here, and uh, what will happen over time is you'll uh, pull your spinner back in, and the entire blade will be gone because it actually wore completely through the blade. Whoa! If we use it till it falls apart, we'll see how many fish we can catch. They actually had a few bites on them, but uh, due to the poor quality of hooks, I couldn't keep the fish on the hook if they just aren't sharp enough to stick. So we're going to basically do the same thing. We're going to make a loop here with a wire, and then we're going to put a shovel hook on here. See so now, there's our orange hook. Bend is closed. Put our tag end off. And, uh, 
I'm gonna put an extra bead on here, right below where the body goes. And then we'll put our orange body back on. So we'll put a bead on the top. The crevice will actually spin on there. These spinners are a little bit heavier than mine. Will sink a little faster. This means you'll snag on the bottom more. Okay, there it is. Doesn't look the same, but it still has an orange body and an orange bleed. The color on the hook is a lot darker than what's on the body, but it'll still work. Bender loop for the top. This spinner here I will uh, use for smallmouth fishing. Go up to Schuylkill County. Smallmouth are a lot of fun to catch. Pound for pound, they are a very strong fighter. If you get one over over 10 inches, and there's our new creation. Orange body and orange blade. Spin it. Make sure it doesn't hang up. That's a very heavy spinner. You always want to have a few heavy spinners in your box. Get to a big hole, you want to have something that can go down deeper if you're fishing a, a swifter stream. Thanks for watching PA Timber Gifts today. Hopefully you enjoyed this short video today. Making some spinners. I have two and a half dozen nice shiny spinners with extra sharp treble hooks. And hopefully this will catch me some smallmouth bass. Always looking for a monster smallmouth. I think the biggest I've ever caught was 20 inches. I've never got past that mark. So we'll see what this will get us this year. As always, hit that subscribe button, smash that like button, and uh, we'll see you in our next video.